Good morning, gardening friends. It's very early Sunday morning, August 9th, I think it is. And I'm standing under this awesome sunflower. And today we're going to water the garden. We're going to harvest, do a morning harvest. I didn't harvest yesterday so I could have more on the plants. And uh, I love doing a morning harvest. So I usually don't film my morning harvest because it's just such a peaceful time and but I do want to share that with you guys because it's so beautiful I'm also going to be feeding my plants with some 511 fish emulsion this will be my third time feeding them this season and my first time ever feeding my garden I used to just do compost and let the worms take care of it but um, I was inspired to try some 511 so all right so let's check out what's out here in the sunflower garden and let's get to it thanks for joining um, so happy you're here let's go so I'm really excited that I have these sunflowers right here in front of my favorite old shed we're gonna have to tear it down soon it's got major structural damage and termites um, but I'm hoping to get a greenhouse instead much more useful so I have a hose out here and just want to say that these dig and flip beds are doing really well um, strawberries over here there's a volunteer pepper which I'm excited about that's my that's what I used to film it's much easier than a tripod um, and then five sunflowers and that one's got to be 12 feet tall that's crazy but so pretty and there's so much root depth when you do this dig and flip method which I'll include the video on how I did it super easy and I mean amazing root depth because you can tell with sunflowers if they don't have enough root depth they don't get as big you know, pretty easy to tell how they're doing so I'm gonna water this with this broken hose that actually is a blessing because it reaches all the way out here and I got we got new blades for the mower yesterday so we finally got to mow the grass um, and then we'll go over there and check out what's going on in the garden and give it some love. I apologize for all the sounds of the bugs. That's just the way it is here, so I don't even notice it. All right. So let's start here. This is one of my favorite places to be, the arch trellis. Super easy build and so gorgeous. And I want to show you these little cucamelons, and there's a bunch of cucumbers to harvest. I've got my box, my snippers, and I'm just going to take you with me because personally I'd rather see close up of people's gardens than their faces, but I love your faces too. And let's check it out. I already see lots of cucumbers and lots of cucamelons. They are so cute, hanging down like little little watermelons they are adorable and I've actually these are the Boston pickling cucumbers I've got quite a few that are getting bigger than I like to let them get before the Sun comes up too bright I wanted to show you the little cucamelons and they they're pretty good. They taste like a bit of a slightly bitter cucumber, um, but mostly they're just adorable. Here's a cucumber I let get too big. Oh, I threw it on the ground. I saw one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and fertilize this this morning. I'll try to give everything one last little boost. Sometimes when they grow on the wrong side, I have to push them down. They won't come through. Mm, here's another one. So I pick mine really young. And I throw them. There's still so many. Wow. 
Oh, there's a big one up there. So with cucumbers, I mean, it's an everyday thing. Look, there's two right here. So, getting bigger melons. I'm actually watering my melon down the way, so let's go check on that. Move the water around. I've got some peppers that are really starting to pop off. I've got an okra tree. Thing is huge. All right, so whoops, that's the wrong hose. Got some melons over here looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this water right at the base of that melon. I'll go ahead and show you the two melons which I think I need to harvest soon because the little curly cue is dead. And so I'm probably gonna harvest that today and check on it. I've got a second one here. Curly cue is also dried up on that one. So that might be ready soon. Squash is doing awesome. Y'all probably already saw my squash update by now. Lots of giant fruits. Oh, here's another melon. Hey. We got lots of squash through here at various stages. There's a huge one over there. Right there. Cucumber's past its prime here, but it's still trying to put out. So, all right. Let's get some fertilizing. The sun is just starting. The sun is just starting to come up and um, I've been fertilizing some things and it's just the most beautiful time in the garden. So I'm trying to show you guys the things that I haven't shown you um, in other videos. So Let's look at this squash. It's finally doing pretty good. And I want to show you the black beans that I've got growing over here. But first I gotta go move my hose. So let's go do that. The hose is over here. So if you're interested in cucumbers or my cantaloupes or my tomatoes, I just posted some videos about that last week. Uh, little tip for your zinnias. You want to water them from the base. If you get water all over the leaves, you're gonna get these really ugly spots. So, I try to put the hose on the ground when I'm watering the zinnias. All right, let's grab this hose. I'll go ahead and put the hose in here. Water those lima beans for a little while. Just look at them real quick. These are the lima beans. They seem to be doing really well. And the next, and I have some green beans that aren't doing as well, the second batch of green beans. I'm gonna throw the hose over here in just a minute on all these squash. And we do have more purple whole peas to harvest today as well. And I also threw in, I bought some on sale asparagus roots. So I put those in. So for the first year, you're supposed to let them go. Um, and they go all the way down this way. Cucumbers are getting a little worse for wear here. So let's go see what the black beans are doing. Let's go snack. Coffee and tomato breakfast. Go ahead and harvest as we go. So my camera doesn't auto-focus anymore. So if I'm close up, I have to change and take a picture to focus it. That's fine. This tomato is going way, way up here. Way up there. And it's just a little tomato in a bucket. The Roma tomatoes are doing pretty good. I ate some yesterday and they were delicious. So I've been picking them about like this and then setting them on the windowsill for a little while.
And this tomato that I showed you last time actually has shaken back and putting off a few tomatoes. That one's looking a little crazy. I will say one thing that I've definitely learned is um, it's better to water deep and less often. So I try to, you know, if we're not getting rain, I'll water every three days or so. And it's been pretty hot. This zinnia, that's the base of the zinnia right here. And it got knocked down. The zinnias are so resilient. It just laid down and kept going. So while we're watering this, I'll show you how I grow big marigolds and get lots of flowers. This one's got mower grass all over it. But what I do is I try to pop off any dead ones like that and I just get rid of them so it can tells the plant, hey, make more flowers and then you get more flowers. I have lots of these big bumblebees and they love pollinating my cucumbers. So right through here, this is beautiful. This is Malabar spinach, black beans, and cucumbers all together. So the black beans are coming up from the bottom here and I've learned to grow black beans vertically because that's a black bean that's a black bean and the original black beans I grew were over there and they did great so they're reaching up so definitely grow your black beans vertically um, here are some there's another plant here and then there's another plant here oh some ate that one hey how rude excuse me and they have these purple flowers. They're so beautiful, so lovely. Tomato, Malabar spinach in a pot so it doesn't take too much from the plant. Um, here is two more, two more black beans growing up tall. They're growing along the fence here. This is just beautiful. tomato from a sucker. I got a couple tomatoes off it the other day. Um, and speaking of black beans, so these are the original black beans that I grew up this tomato cage. And I've actually dropped a few more beans here. And I'm still getting pods. See, I need to come harvest a few of these. Those are ready. And it's still producing. I'm trying to come and take the old ones so it can produce more. And then over here is where I had purple whole peas and I just took them and seeded more. I just literally just opened up one of these pods and dumped the seeds on the ground. So these are, these have been here a while and they're still producing. So I need to come finish picking these old lima beans. I'm just letting them set and fix nitrogen. Uh, let's go move the hose. And I need to come pick these. Excuse me, Mr. Squash. So I just noticed that I these are doing pretty good. I actually have some green beans to harvest this morning. Um, looky there. So maybe they're not doing as bad as I thought they were. So I'll come harvest those. Give them some water. I just love this time. Oh, my little okra tree here. I call it a tree. Oh, I gotta find that one. We sprinkled some cinnamon on it to keep the ants off. Seems to be working. But I call it a tree because it has such big branches that I see birds coming and sitting in my in my okra tree. Um, and plus it has these side shoot branches. Um, I've been kind of trimming lower branches on it. You can see I trim some. So while we're here, 
this is what I do to my marigolds. It's called deadheading, if you don't know. Um, and it's, I should call it ASMR. The sound of popping those off brings me such joy. So I'll just come out here, do this, and hopefully I'll have natural plants coming up next year. Um, but I will save seeds and plant them, of course, but look at all these blooms. So it's just like with most plants, the more you pick, the more it signals to the plant that it's time to produce more. I don't know about you guys, but the sound of picking, like, oh, the sound of picking peppers. Let's go pick some peppers real quick. So these are my peppers. Super late. These were super late. These are tiny, um, but they're already starting to put off little peppers. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have two that are actually getting big. So let's take a closer look. So I have been picking lots of peppers. And they're not full grown when I pick them, but again, the more you pick, the more you're gonna get. Oh, my camera was trying to focus. Here's another one. So we did some, I put jalapenos on everything, um, but I deep fried them the other night when we were deep frying some stuff. They are pretty good. So there's lots of little peppers in there. Lots more to come. I don't top my peppers. Um, I don't. I haven't done anything to this except pick. Um, I did top once, and there's my pretty purple basil that my friend Chris gave me. Um, I topped one year to do an experiment, and I decided let's let nature do its thing. Um, there are a lot of peppers on this one too. There we go. And while we're here, I'm a beautiful kale. Wow. Yes, you can grow kale in hot weather. It's we've, it's been summer in Louisiana, and this kale is doing amazing. Um, it's actually rotted out in the middle here. Yeah, it's so hardy. So all I do with my kale is pick from the bottom. I've actually let a lot of it go, but I I try to keep you know the dead ones down, and I actually eat from the top of them. So I've still got a, quite a few kale. These are my other kale that I still have. Still going strong, little kale tree. Um, enough to get from any time I want a smoothie. They are looking good. And just taking off the dead ones. And this yellow squash looks pretty terrible. But it's put out a few and it looks like it's putting out some more. So that's cool. Alright, time to go move the water. So I picked a few green beans, not a lot. Um, some decent size, but some are still pretty small. But again, it just stimulates the plant. It says, hey plant, it's time to grow. More beans. And you guys have seen this before. This is my giant yellow grape tomato. But I can't make a video without passing by and getting some breakfast. Um, if you don't know, and you want a tomato plant that produces like crazy, this is your, this is your plant. Um, super sweet, super wild, grows like crazy. Make sure you have a lot of space. Um, I've pruned this back a lot. It had a fungus which is now no longer visible and honestly a lot of these I just pick them and I chuck them for the birds because I can't keep up. I can't keep up with eating them. So I fertilize here. Um, I'm soaking these and then I'm gonna go ahead and pick these. Oh, got some tomatoes on here. Yay. I'll come pick these next. Hi. 
I was gonna tell you that my purple hole peas did get some like aphids on them and I didn't do anything at all and I still got plenty of purple hole peas I just left them alone so so this is my other garden and I'm gonna come over here and just water I've got some pretty zinnias around the outside and the tomatoes are still doing really good um, looks like I have a couple tomatoes to harvest these are just insane um, I think they're at the end of their life but I mean they're just reaching to the ceiling I tied some ties I showed you guys that in my video about tomatoes yeah these tomatoes are towards the end of their life but they're still giving me lots of tomatoes that one doesn't look so good and like I said before I picked these young and set them on the counter and let them develop but there are lots and lots in here to pick so I'm really grateful for that I am going to head over here finish fertilizing and see if there's anything else to show you guys So peaceful. So, you know, oh, this is one of my favorite things to do. These are really starting to pop off. I love picking flowers. Yes. And I also threw down some tomatoes in here potatoes. I threw some random potatoes right here. I don't see them poking up yet. Um, and I also planted over here and I can't even remember. I think I started some kohlrabi. Um, but I'll just be throwing down seeds. That's how I do it. I don't care about the moon calendar. I'm just going to plant seeds when I want to. All this dill is done start some more dill just like this so after a morning in the garden I love to get some kale and make a delicious breakfast smoothie it just makes me feel so primal and amazing to harvest from my garden and eat it let it nourish me and it's the best. Look at these little cucumelons. They're so cute. So freaking cute. I love them. And I've got another zucchini here. There's a big cantaloupe here. It should be ready really soon. Oh, I need to check on that guy. That looks almost ready. Got one over here that looks ready too soon. Yes. Love these zinnias. They start out like this and then they just get big and full like that. The candy cane zinnias. So pretty. All right, so last couple buckets of fertilizer. My husband started mowing, so that's awesome, but a little bit loud. So, when I water from my hose, you can see that it just, let's see if you can see that. It's flowing down this way to all these plants, and eventually my little seedlings. So, that's usually what I do, is just set the hose up here for a few minutes, and let it go down. Starting to get hot, the sun's coming up. Kids will be waking up soon and the peaceful time will be over, but it's been a wonderful morning in the garden. I think I'm gonna give some fertilizer to my favorite flowers. I'll just give it a little bit. Isn't that beautiful? I love the original zinnias as well. Not much for pink, kind of a tomboy like that. Um, the strawberries won't need anything today because they're going to go dormant. They're not going to put out again. I thought I should share. I've had really good success with these beets. 
and microgreens. Now this is normally pretty shaded most of the day because there's a tree right here. Um, but I'm actually getting a beet root. So for a while they were just mostly greens, which is fine. And I harvest these all the time and eat them in my smoothies, drink them. So I just pinch off a leaf. So it's working. I, I'm really bad at growing in containers, but these bus tubs are really working. So I gave these a little bit of food. Of course these have holes in the bottom. Yeah, awesome. So I thought I would show you guys real quick what I put in my smoothies um, and then I'll show you what it comes out to be like. So I like to put some carrot juice, some mango juice, and this is the whole pack of Malabar spinach that I picked, harvested the whole plant, and it's already been washed so put some of that in there. And then I have strawberries from the garden that I froze. Peaches from my neighbor that I froze and frozen bananas and kale. So it's going to come out really green, but it's not going to taste bad because it's got all this fruit in it. And then I also like to put some flaxseed, a little bit of water, and that's it. So let's blend it up. So I tasted it, super delicious and creamy. And I'll save the rest because my kids totally drink this. So delish. It's been a wonderful morning in the garden. So um, thanks for joining me. The sun's starting to come up and I'll probably spend a little more time out here, but we'll go ahead and probably run out of film space soon. So. I hope that you enjoyed, I hope that you're encouraged, um, and I just hope that you're doing okay right now. Try to find those things that bring you joy, and try to do those things as much as you can. That's something I have definitely learned, so thank you so much for being a subscriber at Happy Farms, and yeah, I can't thank you enough for making it to the end of this video, and I'll see you next time. Happy growing.